Okay, welcome Auto 2. We're beginning our first lecture on starting system today and we're going to be talking about um, different kinds of starters and how the whole system works. So here we go. Hope you're, hopefully you're taking notes. The starting system uses, like it says here on the screen, a battery and a starter to turn the crankshaft. That's all Auto 1 stuff. In the picture here you can see this is an a electromagnetic um, starter and this is a permanent magnet starter. So this is old school. This is more modern, this is about three times the cost and about half the weight. Okay, um, so a basic starting system has an ignition system to energize the solenoid, whether it's a key start or whether it's a push button. Um, it has a battery here, okay, with some sort of ignition system here, or ignition switch, and it has what this calls a solenoid, but in reality, when this device is separate from the starter. We call this a starter relay. Do you guys know from Auto 2 previously that a relay is a electrical switch? Electrical meaning it has moving parts. So a high current relay is one of these guys right here. And this relay has a disc inside it, a plunger. And what you've got is a coil of wire. And when you energize that coil with 12 volts and electrical current, it tries to center this slug in the magnetic field and this copper disc will hit these two contacts. And hopefully you can see those two copper contacts in there. So we give it current and it sucks it over like that. And there's usually a, um, a spring in there that we have to push against. And that sends high current from the battery positive there into the starter there. So we call that a starter relay. Um, they call it a solenoid here because when it's over here on the starter, it's a solenoid. So it's technically not uh, labeled correctly. Then you have that little drive pinion gear with about a 40 to 1 ratio turning that um, engine crankshaft. Let's continue. So some starting motor fundamentals. First, we're going to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. So we're going to take that stored electrical energy from the battery, which can deliver roughly 600 amps. Uh, for 15 seconds at a, at a voltage of usually starting system voltages around 10 or 11 volts because um, it takes a couple of volts to push the current through the starting system. So you do have some voltage drop. The mechanical energy, of course, is the spinning of the starter armature, which we're going to talk about. Um, magnetism creates the turning force. So by putting current through a conductor, and here I have, like in the picture, you can see this armature inside these field coils. This is an electromagnet starter. Here's your armature here. We're going to spin this thing. That's our mechanical energy, but it's magnetism. It's opposing magnetic forces that cause this thing to spin. And I'm trying to get figured out the camera and everything. This is what causes it to spin. So that gear is going to spin the flywheel. Magnetism is going to spin this armature. Let's keep going here. Um, just one second. All right, Mr. O had to pause for a moment because he just got a text message that his sixth grandchild just came into the world. Awesome. Um, the repelling action of like charges and the attracting action of unlike charges enables rotational motion. So again, it's magnets that attract and repel that cause that spinning motion. We'll show you how in just a little bit. So let's keep going here. So what you've got there is you've got a permanent magnet here with the north-south pole. And in it, you've got a just a bar. And the way the magnetic lines of force twist or bend around this bar will cause that to twist. In a starter, it looks more like this. And this is a really simple one where you've got this blue loop. Imagine a coat hanger, which is a rigid piece of wire. And it's between this north and south pole here. If we put current through this conductor and it's in the presence of a magnetic field, it'll try and flip that guy like that. So current carrying winding, this blue guy here, placed in the magnetic field, rotates the winding away from the pole shoe, so it wants to go like that, all right? So that's a simple electric motor. So the components of a charging system, or sorry, starting system look like this. I'm gonna go ahead and put them all up there. So first, you've got a battery, which is our source of energy. You have an ignition switch, whether it's a key operated or a push button that gives you control of the starting system. We have a neutral safety switch or clutch safety switch. So neutral safety switch means the car won't start unless I'm in park or neutral. Clutch safety switch means the car won't start. When I say start, I should say crank. It won't crank unless we're in park or neutral. 
and we won't crank unless the clutch is all the way in. And the reason for that, of course, is that we don't start in gear and then the car lurch forward and potentially hurt somebody. A solenoid is a high current relay switch that also moves a gear to mesh with the flywheel. So here's one here. Here's a true solenoid here. I just took the body of the starter off. And what happens is when I turn the key and put current into that pin right there, what's going to happen is it's going to energize a coil, and that coil is going to pull a plunger and try and center it in the magnetic field, and that's going to move this lever. So a solenoid, by definition, is a magnetic coil that does a mechanical action, which moves that guy, and that's what engages the gear um, with the flywheel. So that fork fits right in here and slides that gear out like that. And you'll notice it twists as it goes to try and help it engage properly with the teeth. And then you've got your starter motor, your high torque starter motor. Here's an electromagnet one, big heavy one. Okay. Um, lots of torque or lots of twisting force. Let me walk away and grab a permanent magnet starter. Here's one here. Um, Here's a permanent magnet starter. These are a lot more expensive because of the materials that, are, that it takes to make it. But hopefully you can see, and it's a little tough for me to pick up, size difference. The one on the left here is a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and a lot more expensive. Okay. Um, let's keep going here. So what you've got here is the armature, and the armature is that device that's going to spin. And I've got one in my hand here to actually spin the starter. It's made up of about 11 or 12 loops, not just one, about 11 or 12 of them. And you can see um, that it's, I'm going to try and bring everything up here. You can see that it's got an iron core to increase the magnetic field around each winding. So there's a iron bars all in here. It has what we call a commutator. This is these copper bars right here where the brushes contact and you'll have two north-south, let me do it in a better way, to, there we go, like that, two north-south uh, brushes here, and then two here. So we usually have two magnetic fields, and that's what you're looking at when you look right here um, in this picture. You're seeing a north-south uh, magnetic field there and a north-south there as well, and you've got a drive mechanism, which is the gear. Okay, let's keep going. Then you have the commutator and brushes. Um, they're going to control current flow direction through the windings. So what we mean by that is here is the end of the armature with its copper commutator bars. And there's a couple of brushes here and a couple of brushes here. You can see a commutator right there. You can see the brushes hanging out there. And um, what, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put current through that winding. One brush is a positive. One brush is a negative. Let's keep going. And we're, this is going to serve as a sliding contact between battery power, the windings, and ground. In other words, as this armature is rotating, the brushes touch the end of one loop and the other end of that loop, and then the end of another loop and the other end of that one. So every time a loop gets energized, it gets repelled away from the north-south poles of the what's called the field coils. So here's a picture of that. Suppose this is a, a north-south uh, permanent magnet. And then what you have is you have an iron uh, a loop here, um, and then actually it's usually steel. And then you've got two copper commutator bars with a two brushes, a positive brush and a negative brush. If I put current into this brush through the commutator, through the loop, and then down to ground, then what's going to happen is that loop's going to get repelled away from this, and it's going to spin. So it says the commutator reverses the electrical connection when the loop rotates around. Mean, what it means is I put power in, this guy spins like this, and now power is going the opposite direction through the loop because the loop turned over. And so it spins again. So the commutation is that changing of direct or changing of uh, flow through that conductor to cause the spinning motion. So um, the field windings are these stationary poles that make up our north-south pole, okay? So they're insulated wire wrapped around iron pole shoes in a permanent, sorry, in electromagnetic starter. Current flows, you get a magnetic field, 
And then this acts as against the armature's field to make a repelling motion. So in other words, these guys are like here and like here. They're making the north-south pole. We put current through that winding. It repels away from that, that field. Let's keep going here. So this is what a starter really looks like, where you have all these different loops of wire um, going from the commutator on one side to the commutator on the opposite side. And then here's one north pole and one south pole. In reality, you've got another one up here and another one up here. Every starter motor has at least two magnetic fields. I've, some, I've seen some with as much as three. Okay. Um, the starter pinion gear is that little gear on the armature shaft that I showed you here that's going to engage with the flywheel to go ahead and start that intake compression power's exhaust four-stroke cycle. Um, and I think we're going to get a picture here. Yeah, there we go. So it's just showing the armature, and it's showing the gear, pinion gear. We call it a drive pinion gear that's going to mesh with the flywheel there to rotate the crankshaft. Then there's an overrunning clutch that locks that guy. I'm going to bring it all up here at once. This overrunning clutch is going to lock in one direction and release in the other direction. So in one direction, it drives the starter, and in the other direction, it releases. And so this is going to allow the um, when the engine starts to push this out and allow this to freewheel so it doesn't get driven at 40,000 RPM because there's about a 40, 40 to 1 ratio between the flywheel and that little um, armature ring gear. So this just shows how the overriding clutch works. Um, you've got this, um, this um, it's basically a needle roller on a ramp with a spring. Um, this is the same in an automatic transmission, which is called a sprag clutch or an overrunning clutch. But this is one that's used in the starter so that that gear drives in one direction and freewheels in the other direction. And it has to do with these little needle rollers and the springs and the ramp that's in there. So this is just showing the drive pinion gear assembly being uh, moved. Okay, it says pinion gear assembly slides on the shaft for engagement. That should be pretty clear at this point. So let's talk about the starter relay. So the starter relay is an electromagnetic switch. I'm going to bring this all up right here. Um, oh, went too far. Um, an electromagnetic switch, and I have the exact thing that you're seeing in the picture. I've got it in my hand right here. It makes an electrical connection between the battery and the starter, and it's a low current ignition switch controlling a high current starter motor. So low current ignition switch. So when I turn the key to the crank position, current goes to this pin right here. I energize a coil. It centers this plunger in the magnetic field. I'll bring a little closer here. Centers it in the magnetic field. This copper contact hits these two copper contacts. I know it's a little dark in there, but let me see if I can get it so you can see it. There's two copper contacts in there. Okay, let's keep going. So the starter solenoid is the device Remember, it's an electromechanical device. This is not a very good picture, but it pushes the pinion gear into mesh with the flywheel, and it closes the battery to starter circuit. So let me show you what I mean. When you engage this starter motor here, you're sending current through the switch. You're engaging a coil here, and what that's doing right there is that's going to suck a plunger in when it does, it's, going to, it's actually going to pull the plunger this way, which makes this linkage go out, pushes the gear and meshes it with the flywheel. And then simultaneously on the back end, that copper co uh, disc hits the two contacts, and then the battery will send current into the starter to make it start spinning. So the idea of, of this two-fold solenoid is that it's both a relay, and because it's relaying electricity, and low currents turning on a high current circuit, and it's a solenoid. We're using current to do a mechanical action. We don't want this gear to spin until it's engaged with the flywheel. So this thing kicks it out, and by the time the plunger gets all the way over, the disc hits, and power goes into the starter, and it spins the armature. Let's keep going. So a neutral safety switch um, is just used on some cars here so that we can't start the car unless it's in park or neutral. Um, and that's strictly for safety. A clutch safety switch would do the same thing. So here's your clutch safety switch. Oh, 
That one just says only allows the engine to start when the clutch pedal is depressed. So I push the clutch pedal in, get it all the way to the floor, then it'll start. Seen some cars that don't want to crank, and somebody's got a mat that's kind of wedged up in there, and you can't get your foot all the way down. Let's keep going here. So how's a starter motor put together? Um, well, there's four types of starter motors. I um, mean, you don't really need to put write all these down. Um, a movable pole shoe starter motor is an old school Ford one. A starter mounted solenoid, this is a typical General Motors and Chrysler starter uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, an electromagnet starter is everything old school and a permanent magnet starter is everything modern. And again, because the federal government says you got to meet a higher corporate average fuel economy standard. Uh, we automotive engineers say we got to kill weight on the car. So we found a way to kill quite a few pounds actually off the starter. It's more expensive, makes the cost of the car go up, but it is quite a bit lighter. Let's keep going here. We're trying. Okay. That no, no need to write anything down. This is an old school Ford move, what we call a movable pole shoes, pole shoe starter. It's an electromagnet starter. Um, then we've got a picture here. There's another picture of it. I'm going to keep going. Here's a what, what I would call a, more, a, a regular piggyback starter solenoid. Um, this is typically what General Motors has used. You can see this is the copper loops of wire. They're going to suck the plunger over. I'm just going to throw that solenoid um, linkage out and engage the pinion with the flywheel. The disc, the plunger as it moves this way and moves that guy out, is going to push that back, hit the copper contacts, and then battery power goes in, energizes the field coils, spins the armature. Okay, so there's another picture of a piggyback um, starter solenoid. And what's kind of cool in this, here's your starting switch. You can see how it's wired with a coil. There's actually two coils in here. One's called a pull-in coil. It says it right there. And one's called a hold-in coil. So one will have a really high magnetic force to push that plunger and flip that gear out. And then the holding coil has enough magnetism just to hold it there, and it reduces the current load uh, while the engine's cranking and puts more power to the, from the battery to actually spin the starter. Here's a permanent magnet starter, just a lot smaller. We've got permanent magnets here, um, and usually there's um, three pairs of them, three north-south poles. Again. Uh, much lighter, much more expensive. So just something on starting motor torque, we've got to have a, a high twisting force. And you don't really need to write this down, but the gear size difference is about a 40 to 1 ratio, so small gear to a big gear. Here is a reduction starter that Chrysler used for many, many years, and other car companies have used them. They have a very unique sort of low sort of cranking sound. It's where you have a... Um, a gear, spinning a bigger gear, spinning a bigger gear, and then spinning that pinion. So this little guy has a high amount of torque, um, but we can increase, uh, or sorry, we can um, reduce the speed um, uh, of this cranking of the pinion there, but with high torque, okay? So let's keep going. All right, so that's the end of that for now.